Beautiful, uh, what, Chicago, Edgewater Beach, right? Yeah. Uh, Edgewater Beach Hotel, once again. <laughs> uh, this is myself, my name is Eric, and I'm here with Michael Kester. Yeah, and we are once again in a tiny little closet. All right, so this is great, the room we're in. I want to yeah. talk about this room a little bit. <laughs> uh-huh. So ideally, there's a much bigger room over there. Sure. Um, well, we're doing the eye today, by we the way. We are doing all, the, all of the eye. Well, we'll talk about that, too. All right, well, let's get that out of the way first, and we'll talk about this thing. We're right. lots of lots of show keeping to do sure. there. Now, thankfully, we're doing a uh, slasher franchise. Let's uh-huh. call it. That's uh, definitely loosely. what the Killapaloozas mm, were intended to be <laughs> when they were born. The best thing is you haven't seen any of these fucking movies. Don't None lie to me. You haven't seen maybe okay, the Just Gobble. Yeah, one. which is a sad. It's All sad. Right. All right, so dear audience member, you can use the chapters to skip over the different movies. Yeah, and uh, that'll be that'll be probably what the eleventh or twelfth chapter. Yeah, I think chapter it comes twelve. Out, it'll will come be, right after the I ten. Yeah. Uh, well, then there's going to be so we're going to do the you know up through I ten and then the um, the remake, the American remake, right? And then we're going to do the Child's Eye, right? We're not going to do the Indian film. Uh, remake of the eye yeah because we couldn't fucking we get could it not we get just our hands couldn't on find it. it anywhere you can't even buy it on dvd i was gonna buy it on amazon yeah. we can't buy it so there was just no fucking way to see it we tried everything yep so let's talk about a bunch of chinese films today that's what okay. we're gonna do yeah um you can use the chapters we are gonna spoil all the films and in talking about the remake we're gonna spoil a lot of the other franchise we're, we're just gonna spoil everything all over the yep. place that's all we're gonna do but since nobody's seen these films, I want to take a moment to talk about a couple other things. All right. So one, uh, we tested out, um, what show was that? We tested the Edgewater Beach studio. Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and Cabin in the Woods. You got it, which we had to do on an iPhone. Yeah. People have emailed <laughs> about that. That's actually on an iPhone. We did nothing fucking worked. I got us a cable. Uh, the other equipment was damaged in transit, it appears, now that we've plugged it in. So we need more stuff. Yeah. Which means donation time. We have a website, donate.doublefeatureshow.com. We actually have something kind of wanted to announce today. Uh huh. So, in addition to donations or completely separate from it, we are, uh, we're finally doing one of the things we said we were going to do. Right. The first one of those things cancel Killapalooza. (laughs) No, that's not it. We're going to make double feature t shirts, really fucking good ones. Wow. Yeah, it's That's more I, exciting than Blade Runner. Yeah, I'll I say. It's, no, don't don't get your hopes up. No, they are going to be great T-shirts, and uh, you've seen the design. I have. They they actually look really They're fucking, fucking amazing. Cool. Right? They're awesome. Yeah. The thing that delayed us on T-shirts is we aren't very good at designing. Things. <laughs> I mean, you've seen our goddamn website. I'm sorry about that. I'm very sorry. <laughs> but we found a great designer, and he made some mock-ups. I'd actually seen his other stuff and asked him to do T-shirts for us. So we're still trying to get together funding just to even set up to make and sell t-shirts right insane amounts of money have to go into this stuff um we're trying to put up the lexicon on the website as well so uh for every six dollars we're getting we're putting up a new lexicon term that's almost done and this will be included in that but we need donations this week specifically to get started on these shirts the other thing we need aside from donations whether you're going to donate or not email us doublefeatureshow at gmail.com Let us know what shirt size you would want, because I have no idea how big or tiny our listeners are. How big is Podmanity? Not in not in breadth of of people, but in individual persons. Right, right. (laughs) Double feature show at gmail.com. Regardless of if you're donating, let us know what shirt size you want. If you're going to want one. But Send donate, us a picture please. of you without a shirt. No, you don't have to do that. So that well, we know. You, you should do that. Yeah. And then just write the size on, on the, your Yeah, the, write it. Just write it on your chest. In marker on your chest or in the email is fine. You could squish together your boobs and send mm-hmm. a picture that way. That's one of my favorite. Okay. Anyways, the Edgewater Beach Hotel is where we're now recording the show. Yeah. Not next week, but we'll eventually get <laughs> stuff set up here. It's just, it's hard. It's taking a long time. We are not broadcasting from a closet anymore. Right. There was a closet. I knocked this wall down over here. Yeah. This, uh, the building is from the 20s. So what we're sitting in right now 
is the panic room. There's a panic room in the hotel uh -huh. in this particular unit that we're in right now. Uh, you'll notice on this door over here, there's a lock on the inside, but not the outside. Right. Also, what is directly to your right, right um, now? A massive American flag. It's gigantic, yeah. right? It takes up the whole wall. I found this in the room. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we first got in here and just kind of looked through stuff before we started construction and all that crazy stuff, this folded up American flag is sitting in the panic room. So this must have been some kind of World War II in case we get invaded, lock yeah. yourself in here, have your patriotic flag. <laughs> but it's now, it's up here both being completely boss, but also trying to dampen the sound a little uh -huh. bit in here. One thing I neglected is chairs. Yeah, so we're, we're on still the on the floor. It was going to feel so professional. I know. And now we're sitting on the floor again. It kind of just feels like... You know, awesome. it would almost feel like a little bit of a travesty to have our most professional show <laughs> start with sure. the Chinese film, The Eye. Not to say, no, no, I know that that's going to come off like we're knocking the films and that's not what we're doing. But Killapalooza, I mean, let's be honest, sure. is not about professionalism. These are the most analytical, biting, sharp shows we, uh, we do. Killapalooza is about fucking showing up too goddamn early getting drunk right. on caffeine too goddamn soon right. and then being hungry and loopy for the remaining seven films oh, but the best part about broadcasting out of this hotel is uh you know we did piranha oh, we had donuts we didn't have donuts this time so yeah. that's why this show is going to be lousy but uh if we got hungry we're fucked nothing we can do we don't have interns something i'm also working very hard to correct <laughs> but now we get hungry we just take the freight elevator down into the basement, there's a vending machine. There you go. It's great. It ate your nickel. It, but ate, it did eat a nickel. We didn't actually get any food out of it. The vending <laughs> machine's broken. But in theory, all of this is going to work really well. Let's talk about the first movie in the Eye franchise. All right, that's called The Eye. And uh, there's some directors who we're going to be talking about a lot on today's yeah, show. Yeah, almost exclusively. Those directors are the Pang Brothers. That's about all I know about them. Yeah, they, uh, they've done consistently all the I films and also sure. something else that you, you dropped well, the bomb on me, so I'm going to let you drop the bomb on them. So they, uh, they've had a little success in the America as with, well. With the I, yeah. you're talking about. Um, with the I-10. No, uh, the specific film I'm talking about is Bangkok Dangerous. Bangkok Dangerous. Yeah, so the these, are the, Cage film. these are the directors who brought us Bangkok, well, brought me. They didn't bring you Bangkok Dangerous. <laughs> no, I didn't see it. Now, you haven't seen that. No, I, um, I went to drive angry. Yeah, well, we each made our own missteps. <laughs> so, uh, and some other films as uh -huh. well, but primarily, you know, they did this I franchise and they did all of these fucking movies with the exception of Oddly, the American remake. So right? strange. Perhaps fittingly. The Although American the film remake. was based on a Chinese film written and directed by them in China, but it was Chinese. So the first I movie we're talking about is their original i film the one from 2002 mm -hmm. the only one that's actually got to do very directly with eyes yeah well so we're gonna have to talk about that too i wanted to know right away we're watching this so these are you know foreign ghost stories that sure. we joke about all the time mm -hmm. this is uh chinese it's based it's out of chinese, hong kong and right there's some stuff in thailand yeah but this is not japanese whisper ghost stories right do you like how I just made a cure reference on accident? I yeah, don't know why that that's happens. right. Um, this isn't the Ringu stuff we're always yeah, it's uh, not talking Ringu. about. It's how... not Juwan. It's not right, Darku, right. Wataru. I don't, I don't think that's a tale of two sisters. Um, I think yeah. that's Korean. <laughs> You're right. That is a Korean one. Yeah, see, we're, we're not prepared. Not prepared at all. But we're also not racist, and that's what's important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying very hard. I am going to be extremely honest about a lot of my, let's call them my racial flaws. Mm -hmm. Is that? Uh, it's called white guilt. In double feature, just being a completely transparent show, because that's, I'm honestly, because I'm just not good at lying. It's how we have to operate, because we're going to get tripped up eventually. Sure. I mean, I've said this on the show often before. My foreign pronunciation is bad. I wonder things about foreign cultures yeah. I don't understand. A lot of times you and I were watching the movies and we didn't know, you know, uh, religiosity in right. China. How does that play into it? I have a really hard time telling actors apart. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. That's a thing. that, And it's, you know, it's my problem or whatever. And it's, you know, it's not racist, but I'm just going to call it racist because sure. it, it sounds fucking yeah. terrible. 
But, uh, man, we have a bunch of Chinese kids running around, and I never know what the fuck is going on in these movies. I just don't. So what I'm getting at is this is the last place on the entire internet you're going to want to hear people talk about the eye. Uh It's also the only place on the internet people are talking about the eye. So I wanted to know what our ETA to ghosts would be in this movie. Yeah, you made a joke about as soon as she got the eye transplant, you <laughs> yeah, said. Right. So what do you think? How quick till ghosts? Right now, this scene, haha, oh, there's a ghost. Yeah, right, right. But the way that they treat these ghosts, I mean, that's one of my favorite things oh, yeah. about this movie. There is, uh, I guess you'd describe it as a, a subtlety. It is. The ghosts, the treatment of the ghosts is such that in American films, we're jaded. I mean, mm-hmm. we know when to expect ghosts. We know what we're expecting from a horror film. And basically what we're looking for is the door to open, something terrifying to happen, and then right, have right. no social bearing. Sure. If that makes sense. Yeah. In this film, the ghosts are actually given development. Right. They're created. They're, there are bases for a lot of the ghosts and for a lot of the fucking horrific things that happen. They, they don't There's just show up and them. vanish and yeah. never come back. Some of them do. Some of the more terrifying ones do. The woman right at the beginning in the hospital never comes back. We never see the elevator guy again. Yeah. But if you look at somebody, I mean, there's, there's the, um, the report card boy. Sure. Who, I mean, he becomes a part of the story. Yeah. Almost a staple of the franchise if we're looking for them. And he's, he's just as eerie and unsettling as, as any other terrifying ghost. It's just that. The gravity of that character is so much greater because we're familiar with it. I also find that the effects they're doing are a lot more subtle mm-hmm. than you know you might see in at least what I was expecting or what I'm familiar with a lot of the Japanese stuff. Right. I mean, also, this is just, yeah, but, haha, I'm racist again. But I'm thinking a lot about the Japanese ghost stories. Well, that's, I mean, that's really where a lot of my element of understanding comes from when sure. it comes to horror from sure. the far East. Yeah. I've really been far more exposed to Korean and Japanese horror yeah. or film really yeah. than Chinese. Well, also when you think about the major pictures in the United States that are ghost stories in the uh-huh. last 10, 20 years, sure. a lot of them are remakes. Well, you look at, you look at um, what, what's the prerequisite for being old school American horror. <laughs> not a Japanese one. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that stuff, I mean, from what I know about the Japanese stuff, that was one of my big surprises, uh, racist, about the Chinese stuff is how different it was it is. from the the kind of stereotypical idea I have of, you know, choppy Japanese editing, spooky, right. whatever stuff. The way that they kind of almost play with shadows and... Mm-hmm. You know, when she's in the room and the room is warping between this room and uh, the, the memory room. Right. Or that um, the rocking chair shot I know you like with the shadow. Sure. It's stuff that is very, very subtle. It's yeah. not uh, there to startle you nearly right. as much as the stuff I'm familiar with from Japan or even the American stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, scare shots, we've called them since the beginning of yeah. our show. It's something that's very common in horror. And this movie, I think, uh, it creeps on you a lot more than that. Yeah, it does. It builds terrifying suspense. Mm -hmm. And then by the time, I mean, it pulls the trigger so slowly that by the time the gun is being fired, you're more afraid of how long it took for the trigger to be pulled. Sure, sure. Yeah, and that's the stuff we've talked about in paced movies and in, uh, that's the Joel David Moore word coming back, paced uh, movies. Or... um, you know, it's stuff like The House of the Devil. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a big yeah. go-to for that. But it, there is something in this movie that I think the fast edits, that kind of the the fear editing yeah. stuff that I've talked about before, I do like that style, but I hate those scares. They feel cheap and they make me shout at the movie yeah. and tell it to go fuck itself. But uh, there is something that this movie does for scares that... I wasn't aware, it's a technique I'm just not familiar with, I've never thought about, that lends itself to the content, the story of the movie. And that's the fact that our protagonist is having a hard time seeing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we're watching a movie, we're relying on really two senses. We're relying on being able to see and being able to hear. And we know that the audio is never going to help us. Yeah, It's always just going to terrify us, no matter what the fuck it's doing. Even, you know, with subtitles the entire yeah. time. A kilopoos of subtitles. That's a thing that's happening right now. Yep. And you watched it. I know. I know. We both did. Um, we're watching this and 
the visual component of it, the idea is she's never been able to see. Right. There's a story mechanic there, an intellectual idea I really uh, want to talk about, but also from the mechanism of horror of it being scary is that everything's fucking blurry and it's kind of one of those things you prepare yourself for in one of i think the cheapest types of scare shots which is that uh you're focused in one area um you know depth wise and something appears right in front of you Mm -hmm. that was something that happened in cabin in the woods that they kind of played with and i think they did it very well there but you see something where the entire frame is blurry and I expect something to pop up, you know, an inch or two in front of you sharp and growl and jump at you. Right. And it just, I mean, I I call it cheap or whatever, but maybe it's just because it fucking startles me every time I hate it. But not being able to see, you know, when we get that kind of point of view shot from the protagonist and her vision is blurred. Yeah. It never exploits that. Not in this film to make a scare shot. But man, it fucking horrifies it me. Really, it's terrifying. You it's, find that kind oh, of yeah, scary? Oh yeah, no. A lot of <laughs> yeah. a lot of what goes on in the film. I mean, the strength of the film comes from this general lack of understanding of your surroundings. Yeah. And to think about one being just thrown into a place where you can finally sure. see for the first time, sure. and to have that be immediately, because we talked about how quickly the ghosts show up, yeah. to have that be immediately juxtaposed with horror. Yeah, you're going to start seeing ghosts. Yeah. It, it, and, and what's terrifying is having never seen anything before, you're not sure, sure. where to draw the line on what's uncomfortable because you're unfamiliar sure. and what's uncomfortable because it's unnatural. Yeah, and so that's where it starts to play in with the, um, the I call it the intellectual idea of the movie, but yeah. you know, one of the, the points there, I think the interesting idea they lead with, yeah. which is somebody who hasn't had sight uh, in a long time or ever, and suddenly they gain sight. The doctor makes the mention of this and, um, you know, the, the simple idea is that you have these other senses that you have been relying on. All of a sudden you can see. Now in my head, I go, great, the gift of sight. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing to think about is you look at objects and you're not going to know what the fuck they are. Yeah. Just looking around this room right now, I don't know what that flag feels like. Uh, you know, we have phones sitting yeah. around in here, microphones, mic stands, I mean, I could guess based on, you know, size, shape, whatever, sure. but I'm really going to have no idea until I start interacting with things. What the fuck any of the stuff yeah. I'm looking at is, you know, that's a really, uh, it's a mind blowing idea. It's, um, yeah. it's just this whole fucking dimension that, uh, kind of expands in your head mm-hmm. to go, wow, I never considered that. Right. I mean, I hadn't before yeah. I watched this movie. Never once had I gone, oh, you're blind forever. You get your sight back you're not going to know what the fuck you're looking at. Right. Well, and that's, I mean, you were telling me that that's kind of the basis of the idea of the film. Like, yeah, it's based on that. What some, I hesitate always to say based on a true story, sure, but it's certainly based on the truth and lies. Right. Well, there was, uh, there was someone who had these implants, they were given sight and they killed themselves, which that's not how this film ends. No. I guess it is. It's how, it's how the, the, that's where the eyes come from. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, but uh, the original story never claimed that the eyes had the power to sense exploding gas trucks. Sure. Well, we'll get into or plenty dubious territory. Or whatever such thing. Um, further in the franchise, stuff will start getting a little iffy. But just as a you know, just as a premise to kind of go, oh yeah, what did, what was that person thinking? What was it like the first time they got eyes? <laughs> you know, the first time they gained sight. Right. It makes you and I realize we don't fucking know anything about. You posed a question to me about Braille. Mm-hmm. Blows yeah. my fucking mind. Yeah. Again, Braille, localization, different languages. Yeah. Is Braille its own language? Is there a Chinese version of Braille? Does Braille spell out things in Chinese? Uh, can you not even compare? I don't know anything yeah, about being blind. All I've never I know, even considered. I know, I know that sign language varies based on region. Sure. And that has a lot to do with the fact that sign language deals with um, kind of social signals like sure the way a person looks or you know expressions or sure. different uses because if you were to take something like just take something as simple as eating uh-huh. the utensils vary based on right. the region so right. if you were to take the the you know the sign for eating in the united states it might be different than the sign for eating in another country where sure. 
you know, it's, it's a different motion that gets associated yeah, right, with eating. Right. But does that translate to writing when it's an entirely, especially when it's not actually written, it's not a visual medium sure. at all. It's the, it's the lack of it. Yeah. So it became a lot for our minds to kind of yeah. go over in this. And then we killed ourselves. <laughs> the, uh, the movie almost glosses over it. It yeah. just kind of, you know, it talks about it very briefly and moves on, but that's enough to ponder on for an entire film, for several films. It's mm -hmm. enough to think about when the films have no longer become about eyes. Yeah, right around, like, number five. For all the endings that these movies have uh -huh. uh, that kind of vary in, in the scope of what they're accomplishing, Sure, I think this is my favorite ending from the series. This is going for your favorite? You know, they went big with it. Mm -hmm. And this isn't a movie that's about being large or epic sure. to any degree. No, it's not. It's a very, I mean... It's a personal film. It's a personal film for this one woman. Yeah. It's her struggle with this and then, you know, learning the history a lot of these movies are about uncovering some kind of history. Almost sure. all of them really yeah. uh, have some degree of that, well, I guess. I think, and, and a lot of it come, a lot of it also, and we'll get into this more so with the second film, but a lot of it deals with mythology. And sure. that's where we kind of got into the questions of religion yeah, in, right, in right. China, because we don't fucking know. Well, what's acceptable and what isn't, what the, you know, culture just commonly uh, sure. states is. Things like ghosts, right? yeah, yeah. What's generally under, understood and accepted sure. as the you know the real world? Well, when you I mean, think about, they talk a lot about Buddha and reincarnation. Sure. I mean, I honestly don't know enough about China to go. Oh, people honestly believe that over right. there. You know, ninety percent of people really believe mm -hmm. reincarnation. But it's like you even have trouble with that with religion over here. Yeah. Well, you oh, can seventy-five yeah, percent believe in sure. you know Jesus coming back. Yeah. But you, that's that's bullshit. Seventy five percent of people don't really believe that. Right. They just say they do. You can look at the face of the United States and it looks like a Christian nation a right. lot of the times. <laughs> right. But then when you look at the numbers, you get sometimes you see numbers like, you know, eighty percent of the United States are sure. atheists. Then you get another number like ninety percent of the world is Mormon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean <laughs> Right. You, <laughs> well also could you imagine a movie that just accepted that everyone really believed Jesus was coming back? Right where people were making plans for what to do five years from now, and they went, whoa, 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 don't worry about that. Jesus will be back. Yeah. I mean, it'd be absurd. Well, and it's, but people say they and, believe and that. And for, for any of our listeners that don't live in the United States or aren't entirely familiar, our entire country is based on the fact that you can practice any religion you want. There's no official sure. national There's religion. There's no state-sanctioned religion. Which basically means nobody knows how anybody else's religion works because right. everybody is so fucking concerned with their own and sure. being the best at being the best Methodist right. that you could ask them some tenet of Judaism and they would first off not know second off laugh and third tell you you were going to hell. Right. Well, and so the point I'm trying to get across is we can't even figure this fucking thing out about our own country. It's mm -hmm. a constant exploration I, I'm never going to be able to understand China. I'll never understand China. I want to talk about the second I film. So the second I film is my favorite. Oh, okay. It's so, definitely my favorite. Sure. Go um, on. Not to say that I didn't like the first one, because I think you and I both agree that the first two efforts in this franchise are legitimately good films. But the second one has a big beat shopping montage, and I know you're a fan. Yeah, I, you know, I love, I love shopping. I, I mean, I like having a good time. I like when a film verges on exploitation and then takes sure. a really dark turn. Yeah. I mean, this film is the kind of film that you have a shopping montage followed by an attempted suicide and then she wakes up and then she attempts suicide again and you think, oh, well, I guess two suicide attempts is really all we're going to get in this film. Sure, sure. I think You're my, so wrong. If there was ever, um, you know, the movie trying to win me over. Yeah, I know. I agree. <laughs> There's that scene where she goes to buy a bunch of wine uh, to get drunk and kill herself, I guess. And at the last minute, she makes this, this beautiful, just, she decides I'm going to put away all the wine and instead she buys a bunch of milk and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of drunk I get. Sure. Don't drink it's alcohol, but man, I'm having a bad day. I will go buy some Reese's peanut butter cups. You yeah. have no idea. The part of the film that wins me over, and I know you're right on board with this, is the Fetuses. second time she jumps off a building. Oh, there is that, too. That, yeah. That moment where it shows she jumps off the building and the ghost is there kind of watching her not sure. have died. And sure. you're sitting there going, wow, this woman's dedication to preserving the life of her child has taken her to the point of jumping 
off of a building. She leaps from the roof. The camera follows her the entire way down. Yeah. And shows in a wide shot her splat on the pavement. Yeah. And she and fucking she survives. And you're kind of mad at that point, yeah. right? Like, oh, come well, on, you can't live. But she climbs back up the <laughs> stairs to leap off again. That's awesome. Oh, it's so good. That's and she still great. survives. Yeah. Well, the ghost won't let her die. Right. And which that, is just And it's weird because accept. this film deals with this idea, right? That it deals very heavily with reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember learning way back that the religion of fucking China was con was Confucianism. Sure. Confucianism. Okay. That's what it's called. I just got um, nothing. That I honestly don't know if that's even a thing anymore. <laughs> sure. It seems like a bizarrely dated religion that's i mean it's it seems so akin to buddhism to me which i hesitate to even call a religion right a lot of the times but on other days i'll call everything religion i'll sure, call fucking sure. shopping at walmart a religion on a bad day <laughs> um right but that's the crazy thing is you know the movie feels the need to explain buddhism yeah it goes you know that thing that all chinese people believe yeah. buddhism which is this in case you don't yeah. know so it's either prepping itself for an overseas audience or people in China don't actually fucking believe in Buddhism. Yeah. And don't it, know. It, don't know the answer. It basically deals with an extreme visual component to the belief of reincarnation. Mm -hmm. It's a person has had a near-death experience and given birth, which are sure. apparently the two things that help you see ghosts best. Yeah, see ghosts out of out of what part of your body? Do that's you see them? your eye. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's that's, called the eye too. Yeah. That's, and uh that that has to be what the franchise is named yeah, after, right? Sure. The fact you can see ghosts. That's right. why they call it the eye. Um or that's the excuse we're giving yeah. them. They call it the eye because the Pang brothers made it yeah. and they call all their movies the eye. Yeah. And that's the only reason this <laughs> is a franchise. Um but the film kind of deals with this woman who's I mean, honestly, the film is about a, a single woman who's going to have a baby and how she's going to deal with that. Also, she can see the spirits that are trying to possess the infants as they're born. Sure. Um, is this movie harder to comprehend on that level or am I stupider when the second movie started playing? I is feel like what there? once you understand the methodology of what the film is going for, it seems like it's really easy to understand. It when seems you kind like, of have the blueprint there. Yeah, it seems like the film is saying ghosts come in, go into babies' bodies, and then the baby is the reincarnation of that ghost, yeah. and the past life is erased sure. from the memory. But there's this entirely bizarre component that I honestly am in love with, mm -hmm. which is that this woman sees the ghosts, and the fact that she can see these spirits makes the entire process horrifying sure sure it's the same process that's been going on for millions and millions of years we're oh, yeah, talking this isn't just her being tortured this yeah. is what always happens yeah this, this is akin to something like uh way back when we did midnight me train where it's just this is how it is yeah right only now you see it yeah i mean even to People go back to cabin into in the, the woods the vagina yeah. during birth once that's you see what what's birth. been going on for thousands of years yeah it becomes not okay yeah right. and i love that i yeah. love when you rip i mean it's the wizard of oz yeah you pull the veil you see the inner workings and it becomes this ugly and sure. heinous <laughs> ritual yes this is how the sausage is made yeah you know it's funny because birth is already the most unappealing thing sure. ever it's one of those few things in movies where I just feel like if no one ever filmed a birth scene ever again, I would be okay. Yeah. Wouldn't bother me in the slightest. Every time one happens, I get this feeling, a feeling we may get later in the I franchise, that I've seen this before. Yeah. I know. Yeah, you're going to waste the next eight minutes of my life. I know. The mother pushes and she makes a little constipation face and they never play the fart sounds that come out when women give birth but right. they happen they're there uh -huh. very true there's a great skeptic article on uh, i'll link to it on what actually happens when women give birth it's mortifying but you know and then the baby comes out and cries and there's blood and wah and then someone will it's the same fucking scene mm -hmm. and i then can it storyboard has everyone no umbilical thing. cord right at least something's trying to get into the vagina at this point yeah it's 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 one of the wonderful most, take on the pregnancy scene because the, the way scene. that they get these ghosts to move into the body it's clearly they film people underwater yeah. and then superimpose it over sure. these hospital scenes and sure. it's really unnerving um and the film kind of walks this line of a hero trying to stop the machine sure until this halting moment that i love because the film doesn't even need 
to do something like this. Sure. But the halting moment where our protagonist finds out that the spirit trying to take her baby, Mm -hmm. her baby's body, is her ex-boyfriend's dead wife Uh who committed suicide because of the affair. Ghost drama. And it suddenly becomes this obscenely dark cyclical rationale where you have to think about how fucked up it would be to raise the, I mean, think about being with somebody and them using you as the mistress or mister. Yeah. Um, (laughs) This is all sounding very familiar to me, Michael. And then think about raising the person you helped betray. Yeah, right. Uh, it, no, that part doesn't sound so familiar. It's horrendously dark and twisted. But you know what? what's also great about that? And I'm not even sure the film real... I mean, they of course they realize it. There's moral ambiguity. That's what they're going for uh-huh. here. Um, the wife should become the protagonist at sure. that point. This woman basically does not want her, let's call him ex-boyfriends, uh, I guess now ex-wife, yeah. to reincarnate her baby. Yeah. So she does everything she can to fight and get away. And we get some uh, some moments that remind me of the movie Inside uh-huh. we talked about. Yeah. But that kind of get away from me, get away from my baby. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you root for her because she's the protagonist. But if you stop and think for a second, this is the mistress we're rooting for here. Yeah. The mistress that drove this other woman to suicide. Sure. So, I mean, really, I feel like the man in this situation is the most at fault uh-huh. ethically because he's the liar. Sure. Uh, she would be secondly at fault, if yeah. not just as much for conspiring with yeah. him. Unless she didn't know. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, mean, that's I guess possible. there's there's really no reason to believe she didn't know. But at the very least, we're now uh, think about this movie. If it followed the wife, I mean, logically, it would make so much more sense this woman who was just overwhelmed with these feelings of inadequacy and betrayal kills herself, finds a chance to be reincarnated in a twisted way somewhere back in her husband's life. Uh I mean, that is a ghost love story. And instead she is the, the creepy, terrifying antagonist of the film. Yeah. And then at the end, this is what I love about the film is then at the end, after the, I don't know, fuck it, the miracle of birth. (laughs) Yeah. Right. The mother of the baby is like, you know what? This is my baby. Whatever. My baby now. Sorry about that, baby. Really sorry about all that stuff. Hope we can just forgive and forget. Go ahead and suck on my nipple. (laughs) Ex-boyfriend's dead wife. Yeah. That's uh, one of the the more fucked up moments. Not in the way that everything else is fucked up in the film, but when you sit and think about it and you're like, ah, there's happy music here, but I'm not really sure. Hold on, everybody. I'm not sure I'm okay with this. The movie has a lot of different moments, though, where they're they're um, playing with their aesthetic more and with what they think is scary. I think on a whole, the first movie goes more for a horror movie. I agree. And the second one just lets itself be a film, know, whatever a really it wants to be. Yeah. Open, organic, bizarre idea. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a drama that happens. That yeah, we've seen exactly. this in the slasher sure. franchises it before. Um, but it was Witchmaster, yeah. right? It wasn't yeah, that? Yeah, the fourth uh, one. Yeah, so just, you know, weird things that sometimes happen where dramas play out here. But they do have their moments of, I mean, I think about the people falling from the sky. Um, yeah. Even more so, they fall from the sky one after another, fucked up, but then twitch on the ground and talk. And talk. Oh, God. It's terrifying. Um, the kind of Stanley Kubrick corners that the movie is, uh-huh. you know, those super wide turns around corridors. Uh, There are these moments here and there that are definitely meant to make you tense and play that up, but it comes into another one of those Chinese culture things. Mm -hmm. I think in China, people call this a horror movie. I think we watch it here, and if someone called it, you know, a supernatural drama, um, just uh, compared to what we're used to seeing, no one would flinch at that. I agree. What is Logic doing right now? Are you seeing this? No, I can't see anything. There's like a window that, it's probably fine. Um... (laughs) Yeah, so that was that. And then there's the yeah. I-10. Right. Yeah. Which well, because 9 ends on such a weird note. You're going to say that right before the tongue smacking? That's, <laughs> That's true. No, you're right. You get into this movie, and I mean, I can't see the progression here. I don't know how we... It seems like uh, right away we've just turned into not slapstick, maybe teen comma. I don't know what this movie is. I don't either. Furthermore, this is alternately called the I-3 in uh-huh. certain places, which makes as much sense, let's say, as the I-10. 
Um, and also not about eyes, which yeah. is another, let's just forget really about, about the eyes. naming convention. You know altogether. what this film feels like to me? And that's really interesting is it feels a lot like Wolf Creek when it starts. Sure. I, could I don't see know that. if you remember Absolutely. the beginning of Wolf Creek or Texas just, Chainsaw. Yeah. You know, the well, the beginning one. of Wolf Creek is a bunch of kids having a party kids on a beach in a van, yeah. and it's Australian and mm -hmm. we're not sure what they're saying because we haven't acclimated to the back accents that they have. And then but see, no one will give you crap about Australian, um, you know, society. I mean, I probably sure. honestly understand just as much about that as yeah. China, but um, China just seems like, while well, you're super ignorant, Australia is easy to understand. They, you know, they barbecue things. They're simple people. Uh -huh. They go on safaris. Yeah. They can't fucking be true. They're a civilization like anybody sure. else. They ride dingoes to work. But uh, for some reason, I feel like I can come on here and just confidently go, yeah, Australia, I get that. No one's going to hold my feet to the fire like China, where they go, don't you know about China's state religion? Yeah. Don't you know about all China's weird birth laws that are feeding into these movies? You know right. what I mean? Um, yeah, sorry. So we're on a we're on a teenage vacation. Yeah, with a roller coaster movie. and everything. Uh, the titles. Oh my God! Don't forget. Yeah. The uh, the sort of Asian pop uh, TV show sure. titles that are happening in this movie. The whole introduction to this film was such that even after we saw that it was an applause picture and they mentioned the Pang brothers, yeah, you still said I was it's worried. Possible that I have the wrong film. I was worried. With the tongue thing in the beginning, you get a sense you're watching a horror movie, but I mean, the tone is so different. Yeah. Uh, I question if it's still part of the franchise. But I mean, you know, of course it is. We're talking about another ghost story here. The films previous to this are, they kind of get woven in for as different as they are. They're brought up almost like they're, you know, their own legendary tales. But then again, to look at it tonally, we have this scene where they're all, they're hunkering down in their cabin and they're going to tell spooky tales or whatever. Yeah. Ghost mom comes in and it's a big sure. laugh. And Well, she's the death curse. Yeah, right. I mean, it's finally gotten to the ridiculous teens in a cabin sure. on Killapalooza. So far from uh, the first two movies that when we're going through, we build up this list, I suppose a list of 10 different Stories, ways to see ghosts. Ways you know, to see ghosts. Different methods with for, your eye. Yeah, because these people, uh, unlike the protagonists from the previous films, really want to see ghosts. Right. So they're going over all the ways, and the first two ways are the first two films. Right. Um, I heard about a lady that, and I heard about a woman who. Sure, sure. And so, you know, it's really pushing that departure from the movies even more. Going, look, these are their own legends. Yeah. We're going to invoke them, but they are, you know, dramatic, legendary tales. They are just this as is... viable of a story as banging chopsticks on a bowl. Well, when you say it like that, then it seems sillier. Uh, chopsticks on a bowl is one of the fresh ideas to this <laughs> film. But that's what I mean. It's this almost farcical, you know comedy yeah. stuff uh, when they go over these different ways and I like this at first because I think it's building us a roadmap you and I have previously stated on the show we love to have a roadmap to yep. movies because we are the generation that has a three and a half minute attention span have a real hard time sitting mm -hmm. down for movies you know it's just uh, it's something we laugh about we watch a lot of movies but yeah. I don't, even the most compelling movie, I'm bored an hour in, and yeah. it sucks, and I'm sorry about it. I'm well, a miserable person. I mean, it's gotten to the point where if a movie is 92, 93 minutes, right. I'm like, okay, cool, I have time. 95, I'm like, mm, No, I can't do it. Can't do it, man. That's an hour and 40 minutes I'm now. I'm going to get bored. I'm going to have to get up, walk around. I uh, See, I can just blame that on being crazy. I don't know what your excuse is. I don't have one. Okay. <laughs> well, then you're the miserable human being, and yeah. I just have an emotional and mental problem. Right. Um, anyways, what, what was I saying? Oh, right, the roadmap. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we like to have a roadmap. It, uh, it lets us check, you know, and that's the other weird thing about this attention span thing. I can watch, you know, a TV series with hour-long episodes. Yeah. I can watch a whole series of, you know, 24 episodes in one day. Yeah. That's fine. Yep. It's because I have stopping points. Mm -hmm. I have chapters. I have the freedom to get up 55 minutes from now if I really need to. Can't do that in a film. Nope. It's offensive. It's insulting. The film will, uh, you'll hurt its feelings. Yeah. 
So with this roadmap here, I kind of know how far along we are. I don't have to use the uh, thing on the Apple TV where you cheat and find out there's actually an hour left in yeah. the film you thought was five minutes from being over. So the problem with this roadmap is we betray it. It's all over the place. Yeah. It doesn't go in order. Well, it repeats itself. Yeah. I mean, well, it, you get these little titles and I think, oh, every time we see a title, we're just moving through yeah, that. Yeah, that's another, that's another one-tenth of the film that yeah. we can check off the <laughs> right, list. Right. So I'm checking things off a list and it's telling me, nope, go back. We're not done with those umbrellas. We're yeah. More umbrellas. Necessary. More umbrellas. Please, more break dancing. So these kids find a book or whatever, tells them the 10 ways to see ghosts and they want to go through all 10 ways or they accidentally go through uh, some of the ways. And the first two are the first two films, the themes of the yeah. films. And we kind of go back over that stuff. Although, I mean, it doesn't really, it's just a woman committing suicide. It's not a pregnant woman. Right. They kind of don't the... deal with the pregnancy. And when we revisit the first film, that's possibly the funniest part of the movie for me. Sure. Eventually we get to, uh, we suddenly happen upon a scene where a character is running from ghosts. Sure, sure. And he's going into his apartment on the wrong floor. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden it's, because in the first film she's trying to go to, 15c and she ends up sure at 14c because she gets out of the elevator i don't even try i see that sign there's no subtitle <laughs> for it i go i have no idea what that sign says you use a little context you do you're not as uh as mentally lazy as yeah. i am you go oh that must be floor whatever c i just see a sign it's got some chinese letters i go well, i will never know what that says <laughs> i just assumed since she went up a flight of stairs and yeah, then it said well. 15c you are a better person than I am. Um, so this guy gets stuck in the door. He's being chased by ghosts. And so he runs up the staircase. And just like in the first film, the little report card boy is there. And he says, have you seen my report card? And in the first film, she screams and says, stop asking me and runs sure, past sure. him. In this film, he looks at the boy, acknowledges that this is a fucking ghost. And he <laughs> kicks a five-year-old boy in the sure. stomach. Not a ghost. Nope. Turns out to just a be a little Cub boy. Scout. Yeah, it's really funny. I mean, it's, you know, uh, I mentioned this to you as we were watching it, but that's a scene you or I would have thrown oh, yeah. in the movie. For as much as it goes, other movies don't exist. This is its own thing. It does call back to them. And that's one of those great sleeping bag type uh, yeah. callbacks. I really like that. But I, you know, we have the Ouija board thing in the beginning, and then we sure. move right into the chopsticks on the. Bang chopsticks Which, or ghosts will see you. Hungry that's the ghostiest ghosts. part of the film. The So this is the moment where I realize this film is distinct. I mean, the tongue's the moment. The but tongue. The tongue is the first moment, and then the chopsticks happen, and we're all banging chopsticks on bulls so the ghosts don't see us. It's I just don't know what's happening And then they're anymore. playing hide-and-seek, and I don't really know what's going on. Sure. Until he's peeing on a ghost's face. Right. Well, and you I'd... forgot about the special eye mask. Oh, well, yeah. That, that happens, happens afterwards. Too. Right. But, yeah, you take some dirt from the grave, and you rub it in your eyes. Aha. Uh -huh. Eyes. All ten of them. And then uh, you see ghosts or right. something. That's not my favorite way to view ghosts. Hairbrushing. But, uh, well, Umbrellas. there's the umbrella, too. Uh, the midnight comb through, I think, is midnight the one comb you're... Midnight comb through. You know, there was a point where I had to pause and start writing these down because I realized I missed with the, the first couple what were probably really funny names, but midnight comb through is amazing. No, it's the between the knees peak. Between the knees peak. Yeah, it turns out if you want to see a ghost, you just put your head you bend between your... over. I... You present them with a clear path of passage. And then there's also uh, the tenth way, which is ghost fart. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't even remember. The tenth way is the film's resolution, where you dress up I didn't in even ceremonial write down garbs. What it said, I yeah. just wrote down ghost fart. You dress up in ceremonial garbs, go uh -huh. to sleep, turn into a ghost, and then you uh, find your friends who are playing hide and seek in the ghost world. Sure. And then you can't get out because curses prevent you from getting out. Also, basketballs. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, I thought you weren't going to mention getting effed in the A with the uh, ghost dance yeah. breakdown sequence, but that happened too. All right, so let's talk about this remake thing. Okay. Right? I guess we have to. Uh, should we just talk about these remake things first? I think the or most, where do we start yeah, I here? think this is possibly the most important thing that this Killapalooza will bring to the table. And from that is feature. more blind jokes. Yeah. Just chuck them in there. Just need more blind jokes. Really want to hammer that in yeah, i didn't see that coming i hate you <laughs> <laughs> the 
The thing that we really need to discuss is this, and I, I don't want to be down on Hollywood. I hate being down on America. I'm sitting on the flag. All the time. I can't I know, be down know, right? on this America. But the thing about horror in the United States, and again, it's the old school American horror mantra. Sure. It's not a sequel. It's not a remake. It's not a Japanese one. Well, the thing about, and it's not just horror. Yeah. The United States will take the idea for a film that came out five years ago in mm-hmm. another country. Yeah. Go, people don't want to read a book. They sure. want to watch a movie. Right. And then they'll make Let Me In. Sure. They'll make Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Yep. They'll make Brothers. Yeah. They'll make every horror film that came out between 2002 and 2005. Yeah. It's just this bizarre thing that America has decided is okay to secure the rights to modern films remake them sometimes maybe in this case shot for shot yeah and go america makes better movies you sound like you don't like this you know i have yet to see an american remake of a japanese or (laughs) sure swedish or whatever fucking film that i deem to be distinguishably better or more notable than the original it's a no. hard line to walk. And I haven't seen Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Everybody it's, tells me that's the one. Well, I mean, I don't, you know, opinions. Again, opinions are right? what they are. And that's... I'll give opinions. And here's the thing. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo has nine inch nails. So I know. it just wins. I know. That's I don't why I don't ask what you. happens. I know how and you feel just, about that. <laughs> the uh, point I was getting at is that there's funny games. I mean, there are movies I can think about. But funny games is a unique example. Because it's the games. same yeah. fucking filmmaker. But we talked about the u.s version of yeah. funny games and they either do it you know they go shot for shot or they do things differently and people either complain that oh it's just the exact same thing oh, let me in was basically the same sure. movie with more Quarantine. explosions or they go why did they change this scene it sure. was perfect the first time right. so here's my take on that uh-huh again opinions who gives a fuck but i'm just gonna offer this up because it's one of those things that like it, it gets me People remaking the film does not destroy the original. It does not. It doesn't harm it at all. Nope. People complain about, you know, all types of remakes. You get the same complaint with, oh, they're ruining my childhood memories of sure. remake from whatever childhood right. film. James Gunn gets to write a Scooby-Doo and suddenly they're ruining Scooby-Doo uh-huh. for me. Or they remake a movie that, oh, that movie just came out two years ago. You're going to ruin it already. Nobody's ruining anything. First of all, just shut the fuck up about it. Don't yep. go see the film. That's one option. Uh, two, my thought is we're just creating more art. Mm-hmm. If that art is the worst thing ever, well, one, that makes it notable. Yeah. But if it's like this movie where it's just kind of, well, we did it again. It's more American right. and no one really thinks about it. That's okay. It's just there. I think we the counterpoint to that argument, not to say that I disagree. Sure. But I think the counterpoint to that argument will always be why not create more original material? Well, I don't think that's the question, though. I don't think there's ever a question of could we have taken that could, money? Would those... the eye have been a different film? Yeah. Or would right. it have just been dispersed in Hollywood to pay parking meters? Right. <laughs> right. That's exactly it. That studio did not spend a lot of money on this. Or, and, and it's not that they're that the people are necessarily devoting their time sure. in, a, in an essence that prevents them from doing other things. I mean, Patrick Lussier who edited the film yeah certainly didn't need to be doing anything else at the time sure well that's Best the question right in is, a little office in front of a computer is jessica alba would she have been working on sin city 2 or would she have been on vacation sure you know these people in all likelihood wouldn't have been doing anything it's not like they went to make fucking citizen kane 2 not right. citizen kane the remake because people would sure. there'd be an outcry right they weren't gonna make the next monumental film but they decided to do the eye instead a lot of them might have been out of work. Sure. They might have paid parking meters. Yeah, I mean... Or maybe they would have made Citizen Kane too. I mean, I don't know. We really, won't know. Yeah, you can't know. I but mean, they all decided, you know what? I'm going to sign on to the I2 for whatever reason. And then we found out. And we I found guess, out what it's like by doing the experiment. And I guess the other side of the coin is that you can't make these films without the rights to the films. Sure. I mean, the Pang brothers had to have given them the rights. At sure. which point it does not lose integrity. Well, and once the original creator goes, go ahead and do it. Right. It's become an extension of their own art. Well, and here's the reason that's happening. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo was pretty big. 
but then it became a U.S. movie, and it was fucking huge. Right. The Eye, you and I didn't know what the fuck that was, and then there was the quote-unquote bullshit American version uh-huh. that came out. Yeah. And then we watched them all. Sure. You know what I mean? Juwan, Ringu. Yeah, I mean, you what, find out about this stuff. You go up to the average person on the street, ask them if they've seen the Juwan remake. Yeah. The American Juwan remake, mm-hmm. they will, without a doubt, Say they've never Look heard of confusedly that. Confusedly at you. Yeah. Then, without pausing, ask them how they liked The Grudge. Yeah. And they've probably seen it, if not her. Everybody's heard of The Grudge. Yeah. Um, so it does lead a lot of people back to the original material. And, you know, unless you just have no fucking mental willpower at all, you can erase the version you don't like and watch the version you do like. And you know what? As we saw with this movie... There are some great things about a fresh take or at least a newer take on older material where you can kind of revisit it and go, it's not a lot different than our show, right? Mm -hmm. We're not really making the eye again, but we're having a conversation about it. So if you can view the American version as a bunch of people having a conversation, reenacting it. A dramatization of the eye. If your fucking high school puts on a play of the eye, they're not ruining the original version, (laughs) even if it's fucking awful. You're seeing how a bunch of people interpreted the eye. I think that's cool. I fully intend to see fucking Book of Mormon on Chicago Broadway, and I'm not pissed that it's not real Broadway. (laughs) Sure, right. So, yeah, we lay heavy on the blind jokes or whatever, and there's a lot of, you know, I also think this is a good study of one of those Americanisms. Because it is um, one of those movies that I don't think brings a lot more than the original. It's just kind of, uh, it's a, I guess the word redux, I still yeah. don't know what that means, sure. but let's call it a redux yeah. of the eye. In kind of the same way, you know, you see a movie that came out like Gothica yeah. or one of these psychological thriller movies. They're not really meant to, no one has the idea that this is going to be someone's favorite movie of all right. fucking time. But maybe a good time when you go out to the sure. cinema. And so I think it's a really good study of the types of things, at least stereotypically, we think of how you American up a, uh, a franchise. I think the biggest staple of Americanization that the I remake goes through is this disgusting desire for closure. Yeah, yeah there is a lot of that, um, isn't there? Everything's cyclical. You have narrated bookends. It starts. It ends. I mean, it's it's this thing that I say, I mean, this should probably be added to the lexicon, although I don't think we ever say it on the show. Mm-hmm. It should be added to a personal lexicon of all the weird shit we say, like sure. um, Sky Pig and yeah, Dun right. Got Pigged. It's always pigs. Yeah. Uh, this has nothing to do with pigs. This isn't a pork related. But I always say, and that's how we spent our summer. Sure, you do. Yeah, um, you do. It's when a horrendous event happens and the film ends with all the characters being okay and fondly, and basically like they're fondly growth. looking back at this event yeah. and it hasn't affected their life at all. Well, that was kind of a moment we talked about a little bit at the end of Seven. Yeah. So I won't spoil Seven, but we did talk about the difference between a fuck you ending, which yeah. is on the lexicon, and a kind of tidy scene after the resolution of the film that allows the audience to instead of stewing over the credits and going what the fuck just happened instead go oh they did wrap that up nicely and walk out and forget about it at the end and and (laughs) this film ends with her what looking closure looking out the window yep and that's how she spent everything she's come to terms with being blind i mean basically basically the sum it's it's and that's how i spent the summer i could see right (laughs) right uh, you I know, hate, you I learn things, it. you grow as a person. Summer, no, but that is one of the things. Yeah. It's that and the scares, too. Yeah. We were using our uh, knowledge of really, I think, more Japanese cinema sure. to go, well, how do we build one of these types? This is clearly a studio that looked at The Ring and yeah. The Grudge and said, give you me one in. of them, them yeah. Far Eastern things. Yeah. Bring one of them over here. And so, you know, we have The Eye that's three films in by now. Sure. And we start doing the, um, I mean, the scares, that subtlety is gone. And I also think watching this, you know, helps the first film a lot. It helps you really understand and appreciate what the film's doing that's different. And the craft that actually goes into doing what are essentially the same scenes. Yeah. I mean, you and I always think about what does a film do that's different or noted. That's just kind of how we started watching movies. What does a film do that we could never accomplish in an Mm -hmm. entire lifetime? 
and uh, why does it need to exist, right? And what is it adding to cinema or doing particularly notably? And to watch this version for everything you might decide you don't like about it, and there's quite a lot I do like, but you know, the average person, if they watch it and they find things they don't like, those are probably things they do like about the original. Yeah. They redo the infamous elevator right. scene. You know, you and I didn't talk about it a lot in talking about the first eye, but that was a scene I loved in the mm-hmm. first one. And you and I kind of disagree over which one does it better, which I think yeah. is interesting. But this is one that, um, actually, this is an interesting uh, example because the elevator might be more subtle in this yeah. one. Not showing the face and going for the tense scare is usually what the original eye does and the eye remake does not do. The eye remake will typically go for that fast, loud, choppy stuff instead. Uh-huh. The, uh, you know, things are blurry so that something can pop right. up in the foreground and startle you. There's so many, th- you know, the fucking peephole shots. Yeah. Staring through the peephole on the door so something can rush at it and, you know, scream in a register that uh, terrifies you like animals. Right. Well, plus this film is the one with the Dementors as opposed to the first one, which just had uh, yeah, perfect fucking example. Cesar, the yeah. somnambulist, walking away <laughs> right. with the little girl. Right. And this, it's an angry Dementor. Yeah, these things, uh, you know, when death comes for these people, it screeches and hollers and makes I am legend face. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it does that that classical, this is a proven payoff scare for horror films. And, you know, as we're looking at the differences between these two, I think that's the one that strikes me most, is how America goes, let's make this really scary not weird Chinese, I don't get it scary, <laughs> but like, you know, actually scary. Yeah. We're I talking nightmares somebody here. Somebody in an office somewhere went, what if we did the eye, but actually scary? Yeah. That was the pitch that someone gave for this movie. We also add uh, kind of a supernatural twist, even, even in a, a bigger direction. Less, um, you know, Chinese legend and more. You know, she has superpowers. It's a superpower. She is no different from really, the, with the exception of the fucking premonition thing that gets added at the end where we don't just know an incident's going to happen because we see all the things, which was cool, but we know an incident's going to happen because I've seen the incident. Yeah. In the, this has become, um, what was that movie? Next. Yeah. Right? Nicolas Cage yeah. can see a minute and a half into the future yeah. or whatever. Ah, oh, Philip K. Dick, I miss you so much. So good. Which is different than Paycheck. Right. Which is also, we, that's a double feed. Can we do Next and Paycheck? I'm so down with that. All right, great. That's coming real soon. Uh, I lost my train of thought once again. I got excited about, about superpowers. Philip K. Dick. Oh yeah, so she basically, with the exception of that, can do all the same things. But it's it's phrased as, oh, you have super smell and super hearing. Yeah. And now you're going to get this overwhelming rush and the movie focuses on her senses are overwhelmed. In doing that though, and making this more supernatural, they do also uh, focus more on that idea that I said I liked of... Okay, you can see for the first time, it's overwhelming. And the doctor walks her through the steps, walks the audience through, you're not going to know what's important and what's dangerous and why you should be afraid of it. Mm-hmm. And so it plays out that exercise more. The other thing I think it really adds that's uh, another one of my favorite moments from the whole franchise is the burnout Chinese diner. Yeah, there's this really cool scene where she walks into a Chinese restaurant mm-hmm. and you and I are cracking jokes about the the homage to its... It's, you know, it's the initial Chinese yeah. roots. And it's weird because she asks for service and the waitress ignores her. And she's watching this guy chop meat and she's mm-hmm. on the phone. She says, I'm at a Chinese restaurant. And then suddenly the, what the menu next to her scalds and then catches sure. fire and then goes back to normal. Yeah. And then there's an eruption of flame and she ducks like a good supernatural <laughs> eye possessor right that's um, how you get away from fire by the yeah. way you just duck and then you'll be fine and then when she stands back up she's standing in the middle of a burnt out chinese restaurant that had caught fire and yeah. just been destroyed yeah. a week before so what we find is that in this moment she wasn't actually in the diner she had walked into the burnt out present day diner and thought she walked into the old version and relived right. this memory and just as she didn't realize it, we as an audience didn't realize that until we pull out and see where we are. Sure. And kind of reliving that sort of memory. I think that's uh, probably my favorite thing the film does. All right. So uh, I guess after we go to the West, we have to head back to the East and get our asses 3 d Oh, yeah. 
This is, um, I think, the first 3D Chinese film, actually, yeah. if you want to talk notability. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we could also talk notability because it is called The Dog's Eye. Or, yeah, no, it's called The Child's Eye. And this was a point of much contention when we initially started to do this franchise because I looked on the vast... It, we were on Wikipedia at the same time, but on the phone. Sure. Um, and different Wikipedia pages. Yeah, and I was things. going... There's a there's a 3D one called The Child's Eye that comes after, and you're like, I don't see that anywhere. I don't think that's a real sequel. And I'm I'm telling you, it's the same directors. It's, I think it's the same one. And eventually, we still don't know. We've watched it now. I really, I still mm, don't know. No. Um, let's call it part of the franchise. We have to. That's we did fun. it. Yeah. <laughs> now it is. Now if somebody looks it up, Google will find our stupid page, and it'll have it listed as part of the franchise. So this movie starts, and this is a really exciting moment for you and I. Because we are five films in, and the series has yet to define itself. Yeah. We're not sure why it's called The Eye. We don't know what the, the common uh, through line is here. Yeah. Um, we thought, uh, I thought, this would be a movie about haunted eyeballs. Yep. All of them. Me Just too. Just haunted eyeballs. The covers have, you know, the I-10 is a fucking eyeball and the hand. I mean, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. No. And then we see two lovers talking. Could it be pregnancy? Oh my God, you called that in the first minute. <laughs> and then the movie gets back to it later like it's a surprise. Yeah. And go, well, hold on. Didn't we actually learn that in the first scene? <laughs> oh no, we were just supposed to immediately forget it. That's all that happens in that scene. Sure. Two people talk and one goes, I have to tell you about my ba I mean, my nothing. And then the credits start. <laughs> you just go, well, I don't know what the objective right. of that scene was. Let's immediately forget it and be well, surprised and then, later. And then they bring up this this massive red herring of, I think we should break up. Is that what you were going to tell me right, on the pier? Right, right. She looks at her stomach. <laughs> yeah, well, again, I think subtlety. We should break up. We're back in China. Time for subtlety. This is, no, so I mean, in a, in a series that's yet to be defined, this could turn out to be about eyeballs. Mm -hmm. But there's also a possibility it could be about babies. Could be about babies. Now, we're going neck and neck so far. Yeah. We have one film about eyeballs, one about babies. We're not going to include the remake because that's not the original franchise. It could it's... be about killing ghosts with your own flatulence. Well, I suppose it could be about that too. We really have three competing yeah, things. Yeah, there's three so options here's here. the thing right now is if, uh, if somebody gets an eye transplant, then the eye series becomes about eye transplants with a few one-offs. Yeah. But if somebody has a baby, the eye franchise is actually about haunted babies. Right. Or a more terrifying option, <laughs> if someone breaks wind and they make a joke about it, I have to accept, I guess, right? By the same rules, yeah. you're right, that this is actually a series about haunted farts. Yeah. Really. That's really what's going on yeah. right now. Fortunately, we go with my, my uh, I guess it'd be my runner-up choice just because the name doesn't allow for, my fir for it to be my first choice. Sure. We go with Haunted Babies. Yeah, sort of. Well, I mean, this I film guess has like a triple is. haunted baby. It's a triple haunted baby sandwich. Oh my god! Because we have secret teenage baby. That girl's twelve, and she has she's pregnant. Sure. Which is, I guess, fine. Um, but there's also the the haunted puppy twins. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The uh, which I think one gets what? killed, and the other one turns into just a puppy boy. Okay. Um. Let's assume so, because there's only one at the end. Yeah. And still a little unclear on why there's a dog boy thing the film does a lot in a very short amount of time and at the same time doesn't do enough for you to be able to follow it the way i'd like to i blame bad subtitles i That's honestly I... I think that has a lot to do with it but i can i remember the beginning of the film vividly being about some riots in thailand so they can't go back to hong sure, kong sure and they're holed up at this shitty hotel which yeah. is run by this guy who accidentally killed his wife because yeah. She killed all his dogs, and she also had puppy babies. Right. Um, and then we get this weird element where there's a table for seven. Six people are seated, but a ghost orders chicken nuggets. Sure. And then the kids sitting across the table and their dog, because children and dogs can see ghosts. They have right. the eye. Right. Um, the child's eye. Right. They have the child's eye. They can see the dead, and they kind of eventually divulged that there was a seventh person at the table with them sure this is around the same time that our lead character suddenly develops the ability to see the dead 
which we can only assume has to do with the fact that she has a baby inside of her. Sure, sure. Either that or that the dead become terribly, terribly vivid Sure. when you're playing Minecraft. Sure. <laughs> well, yeah, we get to that scene at the end and just, uh, you know, I guess far after the point where I've thrown my hands up and <laughs> gone this franchise will just do whatever and i've we I walk through the sloppy it. door it's not even it's not a portal it's yeah. just a door i thought it was going to be the fourth wall that's yeah. what i thought we were walking the door through. made of of sloppy but we get through there and it is just uh haunted minecraft yeah uh, that's it's really a intense square car uh the kids are all dead or all alive they're all bound. Yeah. And then at the end, they're all alive right. or dead. Right. Yeah, we get the weird ghosts on the pier thing. Ghosts on the pier totally waving at you in the car. Right. Or are they? Or are they? But, or are they? Yeah, but then also, it doesn't matter because either way, that car wrecks. Right. Um, because the 3D book flies at you. Ugh. The and 3D book's not as bad as the 3D hand. I was just going to say, oh the 3D God. really plays out. So, again, this is another thing that you and I like to do when we're watching the films that never makes it to the show. Sure. But whenever somebody, whenever we're watching something that's supposed to be in 3D and something is clearly coming straight at the camera and it's supposed to be really awesome in 3D. Sure, sure. One of us will, without a doubt, scream like the old sure. 1960s. You right. know, film guy in 3D. Yeah, right. Um, this film is the crowning achievement of that voice. Yeah. Uh, something comes flying at the camera, slows down, and suddenly you're at the Epcot Center. If they had more budget, it would do the Zack Snyder, uh, you know, 360 spin. Or right. I guess I should say the Wachowski 360 yeah. spin, but it doesn't. It doesn't have the computing power to do that. The processors yeah. in China. Uh, the good ones are all shipped here. So yeah. the what they got back there is a 2D version of 3D. And you called it. You you said I'm at a ride at Universal Studios. Yeah, that's, that's it. what it looks like. It yeah. looks like the fucking Terminator ride. Yeah, I mean the hand one is crazy to me because <laughs> it's just a hand that appears out of nowhere. Right. Now you might think I'm saying uh, someone you know makes an arm gesture and their hand flies off and whoa it comes out of nowhere. No, I mean, <laughs> there's a riot and all of a sudden a hand just materializes in the middle of the screen and comes right for you. It's like they have, you know, a 3D effects studio plugin and it just, you can drag and drop. Your just options are particles. Hand, that, yeah, bug, right. a bullet, bullet, yeah, and book. And book. Those are the four things. You just drag an object in the middle of the screen. One frame, it's not there. And one frame, it suddenly appears there and flies towards you. And then the scene ends. Uh, so it's ridiculous. But hey, you know, China's first time. That's yeah. fine. I haven't had any 3D objects fly towards the screen in any of the movies I've ever worked on. Yeah, So that's true. really, again, yeah. let's default back to they're doing it better than we are. That's true. By doing it at all. Yeah. I think one of your original curiosities in going into this was, you know, was it going to take anything from the U.S. version? Yeah. That's... Much like the Rocky Adventure, we are bouncing back into Asia. Yeah. And we're curious, oh, they're going to see this U.S. version two years later. This is like every two years these movies are coming out. Right. Do you think it's bringing anything back? I think that... Do you think they know there was a I, U.S. You version? You know, if I had to, if I were hard-pressed to... to acknowledge something that they took back from the american version it's something that you called when we were watching the remake mm -hmm. and it's this fucking ridiculous layer of intrigue sure where it's stuff going on and then suddenly there's a mystery to unravel right right as if that has any bearing on magic eyes sure suddenly there was a murder and Someone is guilty and who right. knows why. And, and then when you look back on it in a different light, you realize sure. that sure. the players were the same, but right. it was a different game entirely. <laughs> sure. I feel like, uh, and again, yeah, maybe it's forced, but the in-your-face scares. Yeah. Sure, I mean, that comes with the 3D. You know? Sure. But there's, they didn't appear really at all before. And now, all the time. Yeah. There's a dog thing crawling. Jumping off uh, the ceiling. Yeah, 100 feet away. And it just, I mean, there's literally just, you know, creature shots at the end where they, uh, they're on a fucking invisible Segway just gliding immediately towards you. Yeah. Like it's uh, some Mortal Kombat move or something. <laughs> it's ridiculous. 
also, and this is first time in the franchise as well, reaction shots from a dog. I yeah. love animal reaction shots because animals are not people and uh, don't react in the same way that we've built these emotional characters sure. to. But we will still cut to a dog to see what it thinks. <laughs> Turns out it thinks fucking nothing. But uh, we want to know. And so inquiring minds cut to the dog, yeah. find out. Could have been a wide angle lens. When the dog dropped the ball. Close up with a wide angle lens. Put a party hat on that little fucking. Uh, so the the scene I'm thinking of is the there's a dog person crawling around on the mm -hmm. ground. And then, you know, the girl is holding the other dog. This scene goes on for, I believe, an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, just cutting to the dog thing and then back to the dog. And you'd think that the dog creature person has a sense of smell. Or no, but it's more human than dog. It just has literally an ugly face. eight degrees to the left and <laughs> see these two hiding there. But uh, I suppose not. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. But the, um, you know, the dog creature is fucked up enough that I it free pass on anything. It's definitely, it's dog definitely creature related. Dog boy, yeah, I think is the takeaway yeah. from this film. Well, we're getting back into okay. So here's me being racist again. We're getting back into the Takashi Miike kind of um, no fuck that Tokyo Gore Police style. Yeah. This is just so we're too many layers removed yeah. from the culture. We don't see. Here's what I want to know. In uh, in the same way we talked about with Cronenberg, are they aware of what they're doing? Sure. Uh, on the Crash Show, talked a lot about that. Is this weird in China? Is this movie weird? <laughs> is all horror weird? As if to say weird is scary sure. or weird belongs in horror? Or is this normal horror affair that we find weird because we don't see it? Right. Because a lot of Asian horror movies are really fucking weird. I watch them and I go, uh, this is weird. I don't know if that's a pre-existing narrative I just carry with me into these no, films. I think... But they do seem really yeah. fucking weird. And... Uh, I don't know if they shoot for that or if I just don't get so many things that that's what it is. Um, we have a website where you can find the past Killapaloozas. All is, 17 yeah, of them. Uh, 17 Killapaloozas. Some are more analytical than others. That's true. Go to the Saw franchise. Nailed Actually, it. just that one. <laughs> <laughs> All the other ones are about as bad as this. But the Piranha one had donuts, so that yeah, was good. Yeah, that's true. There were a lot of donuts. Um, and uh, one of them, I think, has a Frappuccino recipe on it. Okay. No, actually, I think that's when we did Ichi the Killer and uh, probably an Argento movie okay. that the Frappuccino recipe was on. A point is go on the website for that and find the Frappuccino recipe. And then email me when you figure out where the fuck I put that. As I mentioned in the intro, we're still trying to do the t-shirts. Yeah. Um, I want to do those immediately or I don't think it's going to happen. And we're pretty close to funding it, mostly with your and I money uh, and whatever we hope to make back from the shirts, but we still have to pay all this money to set everything up. Sure. So please, 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 this week, donate.doublefeatureshow.com. We're going to toss a bunch of uh, stuff up on the lexicon, and we're going to get these goddamn t-shirts made. Also, whether you're donating or not, if you're going to want to buy a shirt, send us an email, doublefeatureshow at gmail.com, and let us know what size t-shirts uh you would want i think they're all going to be men's unisex whatever t-shirts sure. we'll see what the order thing looks like the one other thing we didn't get to mention throughout this whole thing is that some people actually buy into the idea of haunted transplants yeah uh and that's something that was mentioned mostly in the american version mm -hmm. almost to a point that i was a little offended yeah. by it, it what was is, it cellular memory yeah. is the pseudoscience name for it i mean that's what art does it offends and that's okay but that's what audiences do is they call out bullshit that is total bullshit and there's a lot that's been written uh that's really interesting about haunted objects james randy's written some interesting stuff uh done some interesting kind of social experiments in regards to you have an object people will touch it if they find out the sweater was worn by a serial killer nobody wants anywhere near it still the same fucking sweater yeah it doesn't have magical powers but uh it's something about the human mind and that goes with transplants too people will often say oh i developed this certain problem that the original person had or i started acting more like them or in the case of south park i got a pig heart and i started acting more like a pig there is no body of scientific evidence to support that none at all yeah none <laughs> just doesn't exist hashtag not a fucking thing um what are we doing next time on the show 
All right, so next week, we're going to do Steven Soderbergh's Haywire. And we're also going to do Neil Marshall's Centurion, because honestly, we really haven't done enough Neil Marshall on the show yet. So uh, watch more fucking film. Bye.